All right, we hear about in the gospel reading today, for whoever is not against us is for us. Repeat that for me, if you will. For whoever is not against us, for whoever is not against us is for us, is for us. Okay, very good. Just take a mental note of that. Uh, where are my five volunteers from Mrs. Bercato's class? Come on forward here. Come on forward. I'm going to have you guys line up right here, front and center. And what, you brought a microphone too? Man, you're, you're awesome. That's, that's great. Wow, this kid came prepared. I am totally impressed. You could hold on to this microphone for me here, okay? All right, we're going to do a little recap of the gospel reading. The gospel reading wasn't that long today. Just, just a few sentences, pretty short. We're going to do a brief recap of the gospel reading. And then we're going to have a Q&A for our third grade volunteers. I promise these questions are going to be easy. Don't, you don't have to be nervous. You listen to the gospel reading, you listen to this recap, you're going to do just fine. Okay? Good? What do we hear about in our gospel reading? Danielle, let me grab that real quick. When Jesus, when John tells Jesus... We saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. What did Jesus tell John when John told him about these people that were driving out demons? What did he tell him? Anybody remember that in our, in our recap? Anyone remember what he told them? Did he tell them to stop driving out demons? Or not to prevent them. Not to prevent them. Not to prevent them from driving out demons. And what did he say at the end of our gospel reading that I said at the very beginning? For whoever is not against us is for us. For whoever is not against us is for us. Okay, very good. So now we're going to go into our question and answer portion of the session. Ready for the question and answer? Now, our ground rules for this question and answer, I want you to raise your hand when you're confident of your answer, okay? I don't want you to just blurt out your answer, right? And I don't want you to answer, raise your hand, if, you don't, if you're not confident of your answer. If you're not confident of your answer, don't raise your hand. That's okay. This is not a competition, okay? So when I ask you the question, we're going to raise our hand when we are confident of our answer, okay? And if you're not confident, you're not going to raise your hand. Got it? Got the... So our first question is, are we against Jesus? Are we against Jesus? Raise your hand if you're confident of your answer. Okay, what, 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 what answer do you have to this question here? No. No. Pass the microphone on. What about you? No. 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 And no. Wow, these guys are they're, they're unanimous in their response. We are not against Jesus. Very good. All right. All right. That was our first question. We got one more question, and then we're going to be done today. One more question. We're going to follow the same process we followed for the first question. We're only going to raise our hand when we're confident of our answer. If we're not confident of our answer, what are we going to do? We're not going to raise our hand. Okay, we're not going to raise our hand. Good. Second question is... How are we not against Jesus? How are we not against Jesus? Okay, we got, we got one hand raised there. Just let's see what your answer is there. Do good deeds. Do good deeds. Do good, that sounds like a good answer to me. All right, round of applause for our, for our third grade volunteers here. Round of applause. Very good, thanks for that. Feel free to go ahead and sit back down. You guys can hold on to that for me. Okay. What did we observe? What did we observe in how confident they were with their answer to the first question to the, compared to the answer to the second question? What did we observe? Were they more confident? Anyone want to guess? More confident with that first question? Yeah, yeah. They were more confident with the first question are we against Jesus? They all said no. How can we be against Jesus, right? You know, Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, 
True God and true man? How could we be against him, Deacon Paul, right? That was an easy question. But the second question, how are we not against Jesus? They weren't as confident in that one. They weren't as confident. Why? Because in order to answer that second question, how are we not against Jesus? We have to know what we're for. We have to know what we stand for. These are really key questions. And a lot of times, even adults, we don't even know what the answers to these questions are, what we're for and what we're stand for. But what I encourage you to do over your faith journey is to have some answers for what you're for and what you stand for. And this is our main message from our, from our homily today. The main message from the homily. Everybody paying attention? Yeah, I, I, why can't I hear anybody? Is anybody out there? Hello? Yes, you're paying attention. Okay, good. The main message from our homily reading today is if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Let's repeat that, okay? Follow me. If we don't stand for something... If we don't stand for something, we will fall for anything. That's a quote that's attributable to Alexander Hamilton. Who saw the musical Hamilton? Yeah, everybody saw that. Interesting quote, isn't it? We don't stand for something, we will fall for anything. You might be sitting there saying, well, Deacon Paul, what should I stand for? What should I, what should I be for? What should I stand for? I don't want to fall for anything. What should I be for? And a good answer are the virtues. The virtues. Virtues are a power, a habit in how we translate our Christian ideals into everyday life. When I talked to Ms. Pritzer before this, preparing for this homily, I asked, you know, when did the kids learn about the theological virtues. She said they start learning about them in second grade, and they reinforce the theological virtues every grade thereafter. Now, there's three theological virtues. Anybody, anybody pay attention in second grade and anything thereafter? Anyone want to guess the three theological virtues? If you're confident of your answer, raise your hand. Yeah, there, there's three. First one is faith. Does that trigger your memory now? Second one is hope. And the third is charity. See, you guys were learning in school. Totally impressed. Yeah. Faith, hope, and charity. Charity, also known as agape, self-giving love. So let's see how this works. Let's see how this works. If you say that you are for faith, that you stand for faith, you believe in God. You accept Jesus Christ as his son. You follow Jesus Christ. Versus believing in just the things of the world. Maybe just believing in yourself. Alternatives that can put us against Jesus. See how this works? See how this works? Second virtue, hope. If you say that you are for hope, that you stand for hope, you trust in God. You trust in his promise of salvation, the promise of everlasting life in heaven, versus giving up, versus being in despair, Staying in despair versus being self-centered. Alternatives that can put us against Jesus. Last example, charity. If you say that you are for charity, that you stand for charity, you practice active love of God and of your neighbor versus taking advantage of others, taking advantage of God. Alternatives that can put us against Jesus. You see how this works? In order to answer that question, how are we not against Jesus? We first have to answer the question, what 
we're for, what we stand for. Because if we don't stand for something, we will fall for anything, including potentially being against Jesus and our neighbor.